In this presentation, we will take a look at and compare and contrast fund balance sheet and operating statement accounts as well as their complementary budgetary accounts. In a prior presentation, we took a look at the accounting equation and modified it for our fund balance sheet, adding a few categories. In other words, we have the accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity. We then convert it to assets minus liabilities equals equity. That's going to be another way that we can see the accounting equation. And then we broke out within the fund account and we have the current assets because we're thinking about the short term flows. So when we think about balance sheet accounts, the accounting equation type of accounts, assets, liabilities and equity or fund balance in this case, we're thinking about just basically the current assets and therefore not breaking out between the current and long term, given the fact that we're concentrating on the current flows. And then we have this added category of deferred outflows of resources, which aren't exactly assets, but are going to be a result of the modified accrual basis and will increase the fund balance as assets would. So we can think of them in a similar category, minus the current liabilities instead of current and long term. We're basically saying current liabilities because we're looking at that short term cash flows once again. And then once again, the deferred inflows of resources, these being items that aren't uh, the same as liabilities but have the same net effect on basically the fund balance as we subtract them to get to the fund balance, which would be equivalent to the equity section. When we consider the categories, we're talking about current assets, which are going to be consisting of what we would expect for a fund balancing on the modified accrual basis, cash, receivables, uh, investments, prepaid items, inventories. Notice these are all items that we would typically think of, of course, as the current assets. That's what's going to be included in the fund balance sheet. We'll talk more. Deferred outflows then being a consumption of net assets by the government that is applicable to a future reporting period. Then we have the current liabilities. The current liabilities, once again, not current and long term, consisting of what we would basically expect in current liabilities. Those being the accounts payable, the accrued liabilities. Notice we don't have long term notes payable or long term bonds payable here in the fund accounting because once again, it's that short term type of items, the short term flows. Deferred inflows of resources and acquisition of NIS assets by the government that is applicable to a future reporting period. Once again, we'll make more sense of this as we see transactions related to it. And that's going to be equivalent or equal the fund balance, which would be equivalent to the equity section of a for profit organization. You might hear other terms with regards to this item with regards to different types of organizations. And you want to, in essence, be able to say, oh, that's part of the equity section for us. In other words, assets minus liabilities could be named different things depending on the type of organization. We've seen with business type of organizations, it's usually called some type of equity, either owner's equity for a sole proprietorship, partnerships equity, or stockholders equity for a corporation. And then we might hear something like net assets, which is going to be the similar term for a type of organization. We typically use the proper term here being fund balance for the for the fund financial statements but just realize when you hear those types of terms you should basically think the accounting equation think the balance sheet think of something like assets minus liability equals the net value of uh, the organization with the fund balance here we have to realize that we need to break it out as well between those categories of non-spendable restricted committed assigned and undesigned and that's saying that hey look we have the assets minus the liabilities that's going to be the fund balance. That's what people are going to want to start, you know, bidding over or try to assign or try to get a piece of that value of that money. And we have to say, hey, this is part of that fund balance that is either non-spendable. You can't, we can't assign that out. It's not spendable. It's applied out somewhere else in some way. Restricted, committed, assigned, or unassigned. And that gives some indication about the, the value, the net value, the assets minus the liabilities and what can be done with it. Operating statement accounts is going to be equivalent to income type statement accounts for a for profit type organization include revenues and then we have other financing sources which are similar to revenues in that it'll increase what would be the net income or the revenue over the expenses or expenditures. Then we have expenditures and we also have other financing uses expenditures being similar to expenses for the modified accrual basis and other financing uses then being something that's going to decrease what would be net income for a for-profit organization uh, which would be revenue over expenses here uh, but not being the same thing as an expenditure we'll take a look at these these examples will become more apparent as we see transactions to record these items 
Now we'll compare these to the counterparts within the budgetary accounts. And remember that we actually post the budgetary accounts. So when we consider, if you think about the trial balance, you're going to have these items on the bottom of the trial balance where the revenue and expense items would be under what would be the equity section or the net position type of accounts. And it's going to be crowded down there because we have the revenue accounts, what would typically be the normal kind of operating statement or income statement type of accounts, revenue and expenses, now including revenue other financing sources and expenditures, which are like the expenses and replacing the expenses. And we're going to have the budgetary accounts, the budgetary accounts, including estimated revenues. So we're going to have a revenue account and then the budget account of estimated revenues. Revenue have a credit balance. Estimated revenues then have a debit balance. And then we have estimated other financing sources. So we'll have other financing sources, the actual account, and then and it's going to be a credit as well because it's similar to a revenue. And then we have the estimated other financing sources, which is going to be our estimate, our budgetary account of what the estimated other financing sources will be. We're actually going to post that to the general ledger. It'll be on the trial balance now. And it's going to be the opposite of the normal balance of a revenue. So it's going to have a debit balance. Then we have expenditures, which were our like expenses for the modified accrual basis. The related budgetary account not being the same in name. So you have to just basically memorize it. It's going to be appropriations. So appropriations are going to be the budgetary account that's going to be similar to the expenditures. Expenditures, like expenses, have debit balances. It's the expense type of account. Therefore, appropriations is going to have the opposite of it because it's the budgetary you know, related account, which is going to have a credit then. Then we have the other financing uses, which is acts kind of like expenses in terms of recording it. And therefore, the budgetary account is going to be estimated other financing uses. Other financing uses, kind of like what the expenses would be or the expenditures having a normal debit balance, bringing down what would be net income. Therefore, the estimated other financing uses has a credit balance item for the budgetary account. And then we have this encumbrances, and I put them into a category in and of themselves, even though they're going to be under what would be the budgetary type of accounts. I would separate it out in your mind as something like a clearing account. And when we go through the problems, I'll do that. I'll, I'll think about it separately and propose that you think about it separately as kind of a clearing account. Uh, and what it's going to do is going to be like an interim step w with regards to the appropriations and when we, can re when we can record basically expenditures. So it's going to go up and down uh, in, a, in a bit different of rules than the budgetary accounts. I would think of the budgetary accounts as being something that we're going to record with one basic transaction, have any adjustments we need to it, and then reverse it all completely. The encumbrances are going to be kind of a, a holding account that's going to increase and decrease uh, in, in another kind of format that's a little bit distinct than what we would think of as the normal budgetary account. So be aware that if you ask the question, what are the budgetary accounts, and you have to list them, you want to include encumbrances basically as the budgetary accounts. They're, they're related to these items, the appropriations uh, related to kind of like the expenditure budgetary account. But, but they're a little bit different in and, and the same format and they don't follow the rule of expenditures have a debit balance. Therefore, encumbrances you would think would have a credit if it's related, if it's the budgetary equivalent. It doesn't, it has a debit and this will become more apparent when we, when we go through it. So I would think of it this way in your mind. If you have a test question, is it a budgetary account? Yes. If, if you're thinking about how do we record these things, these are going to be the budgetary accounts that line up specifically to the income statement or the operating statement accounts. And then the encumbrances is kind of its own, it's in its own world, I would think of it. And we'll, we'll explain what that world is and how it's used uh, much more clearly as we think through examples with regards to actually posting the budgetary accounts and more importantly, in this case, the encumbrance account, the specific budgetary account, which is more kind of like a clearing account, a little bit different, a little bit distinct. Note that if we post these items to the general ledger, we actually post the budget, we're going to end up in essence with estimated revenues and estimated expenditures or appropriations. And that's going to result in an estimated net something, a net revenue or expense. And we're going to have to put that somewhere. Where are we going to put that? Well, we don't know where to put it, so we're going we're gonna to include an equity type of account. That's typically what happens when we do something kind of funny and we need to include a holding account somewhere within basically the equity section on the balance sheet side of things now within the fund balance or what would be at the equivalent of the equity section for a for-profit organization. We're going to include the budgetary account, which is just going to be called budgetary fund balance. So the budgetary fund balance is going to balance out the equation. We're going to post this item's 
estimated revenues, the equivalent of, you know, like estimated revenues, estimated other financing sources, the appropriations, and the estimated other financing uses, and the difference, the balance of it, then it's going to go to the equity section and the budgetary fund balance. And if there's any adjustments, we'll make adjustments to it. But those, that financial, that, that journal entry will always basically reconcile it at the end of the time period when we close things out. We will, in essence, reverse that transaction, taking it off the books uh, exactly. And it'll, it'll work out nicely. And again, that'll make more sense once we do the examples. So what are appropriations specifically? Legal authorizations to expend cash or other financial resources for goods, services, or facilities needed for specific reasons. Amounts cannot exceed amounts authorized for each reason. So when we think about the appropriations, note, we're going to have people that want to assign this money out. Normally with, with accrual accounting, what we end up doing is saying when we have the expense, we're going to record the expense on, 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 on an accrual basis. When we have actually consumed the expense, then we record it here. We want to say, has it been legally authorized already for spending in the future? Because our goal is to be as transparent as possible. So we don't want to wait to the point in time that the expense would be recorded under an accrual basis. We want to actually make it very transparent to people say, hey, we already have the appropriations. These have been assigned out. These are the specific uh, appropriations. And therefore, we put the budgetary account on there. and We want to systematically be able to show uh, what the appropriations are and whether they have been used or not. Appropriation is expended when amounts authorized uh, and appropriation have been incurred. So when we think about the expense related account, which is expenditures, what we're basically saying, hey, look, we had the appropriations, what we assigned this money to be, we've already assigned it there. And now we're going to say that the, the, it has been incurred at this point in time, recording the, not the expense, but the expenditure on the modified accrual basis and therefore the term expenditures instead of expenses is called is what the expended appropriations and expenditure then is the expended appropriation